Hi, it's Francesco. In today's video, we will check the three main ways that we have in Apache Flink to window events together. What is windowing? Windowing is basically aggregating events that belong to the same kind of time area. And in Apache Flink, we have three ways to do so, using tumbling, sliding, or session windows. Let's explore how they work. So let's check the basic example. In here, we have two users, user one and user two, that are basically accessing and clicking in our website. Now we want to count the number of clicks within a certain amount of time, basically windowing their clicks. The first option that we have is using tumble windows. With tumble windows, we are basically dividing the time into non-overlapping fixed windows. So we have the start of the first window, then the end of the first window, and just after the first one ends, the second window starts. So on and so forth, the third window and the fourth window. So we give the windows a names, and if you check, all the windows have an equal width. That width is the window size. Each window has also the window start, called also the window time, and the window end. With this method, all the users share the same start and end window times. So if we think about you know, counting the user activity using tumble windows, we will see an end result looking like this, where we have user one for window one has two activities, User 2 for window 1 has one activity, user 2 for window 2 has two activity, while user 1 doesn't have any activity, so it's not present in our table. Then user 1 for window 3 has one activity, while user 2 doesn't have. User 1 has three activities for Windows 4, while user 2 has only one. This is the basic tumble. Can we do something different? Yes. We can use sliding windows. With sliding windows, the concept is a little bit different than tumbling. With tumbling, we didn't have any overlap. With sliding, what we do is we generate the first window that has the same kind of window size. And then the second window, we generate not when the first window finishes, but after an amount of time. So there could potentially be a little bit of overlap with the first window. And the same for the third window. So with sliding windows, also called hopping windows, what we need to define are two parameters. The first one is the window size, so how width is a window. The second parameter is how much to hop, so the window slide parameter. So in this case, maybe we have eight seconds of window size and seven seconds of window slide. Again, if we do the math for the second type of window, the calculation, we will end up in a situation like the following, where user one for window one has two of count of activities, user two for window one has three, user one for windows two has two activity, user two for window two has two activity, and user one for window three has three clicks, and user two for window three has only one. Again, also for the sliding window, the start and the end time of the window is common across all the users. With the third option that we have, it's called the session windows. We detach the concept of window start and window end across all the users, and we define windows for every single users in, uh, in separation. Because with session windows, the window doesn't have a fixed start time, it starts whenever we find an activity for a certain user. So for example, if we see for user one, at a certain point of time, we find the first activity and we create the first window. As you can see, the window tracks the first two events, but then it is left open. Now for session windows, we have only one parameter to define, which is the session gap. The session gap defines for how much we keep the window open until we don't see any traffic for the same key, for the same user one key. 
In our case, we left the window open maybe for three seconds. We didn't find any further activity, so we can close the session. If we do the same exercise for user two, we open the window, but then within the session gap time, we find a new event. So we extend the session. We extend the second time because we have the third um, click. And then at the end, the session gap is evaluated. And since we don't find any activity, we close the window too. If we go back to user one now, we start the window three for user one, and we, are, we basically do the same calculation, checking that we don't have new clicks within the windows. And we do the same for window four. And the real result is, as you can see in the right, that we have different windows for the users because each window will start when we will find the first activity for a certain user. So to summarize, we have three main ways of windowing in Apache Flink. We have the tumbling window with dividing the time in several buckets, not overlapping, and all the rows will have the same window start and window end. We have the sliding window where I can have a little bit of overlap between various windows. But still, all the users will be, will have, will share the same window start and window end. And then I have the session windows, where the start and the end of the session is related to the activity of the user. And we can define a window gap, a session gap, that defines for how much we will keep the window open until we don't find any activity, and then we will close the window. I hope you enjoy this brief summary of Apache Flink windows. If you like it, click on like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I hope to see you soon. Bye from Francesco.